Hello everyone, we are now approaching to the chapter 2 that covers the scope and challenges in international marketing. Previously, in our discussion in chapter 1, we mentioned the different uh, important components of marketing, such as capturing the market insights, connect with customers, build strong brands, shape market offering, and a lot, and a lot more. Now, we're going to specifically identify the scope of international marketing and the challenges in international marketing. You could not plan, you could not create a marketing plan if you don't know the environment of your business. That's why for this chapter, we're going to identify the scope, the challenges, and the environment of international marketing. We define international marketing as the performance of business activities designed to plan, price, promote, and direct the flow of a company's goods and services to consumers or users in more than one nation. So, um, our customer here is not only the local market, but also foreign market. We're doing those activities for a profit. Okay. Again, the only difference between the definitions of domestic marketing and international marketing is that international marketing activities takes place in more than one country. So today, we're going to study the overview of scope of marketing. Let us try to understand also why do they have to go global or why do they have to sell their products and services in other markets and what's the effect of the globalization in the uh, firm's performance. And we'll, we'll try to identify also the, the world of PESL okay, or the PESL environment like scanning, monitoring, okay, the environment so that we can forecast what we should do with the external environment. Okay, let us also try to understand the scope of international marketing tasks and examine the importance of increasing global awareness. Okay, what are the scope of international marketing? Okay, in general, Okay, there are eight scopes of international marketing. Again, we are dealing here with international marketing. So meaning, it is not only the rules and regulations of your country you should comply with. Besides with the importation rules and regulations, you have to follow some guidelines, some practices in other country. Okay, number one, we have uh, imports. That's the first scope of international marketing so when you say imports okay the firm buy goods or services in another country going to the uh to the domestic okay, market okay and they, they sell it locally secondly the scope of international marketing is export so you have your product locally and sell it abroad or to another country then another scope is contractual agreements okay um, sometimes it is difficult to sell the product in other country that's why some of the strategy what they are doing is give license or they give permit to other country to use their names to use the features of their products okay in selling Okay, so that is contractual agreements in terms of licensing and uh, franchising. Okay, the fourth one is the joint venture, a okay, similar name for collaboration, okay, or collaborative association of two brands, okay, two brands okay, for a reasonable period of time. Okay, more on partnership. Okay. Next is contract manufacturing. Of course, this, this tactic focuses on like 
uh, instead of exporting your product to other country, you're just going to uh, contact okay, uh, the local company in your target country okay, to manufacture a particular product for you. Normally, this happens for um, automobile industry. Okay. Here in Korea, you have a lot of manufacturing industry that makes a part of airplane, a part of uh, a car, and the the market K okay, is being ordered by uh, European uh, company. Okay. They just ordered the products here because Korea has a state of the art technology, and then they send it to they send it to the Europe. Okay, and then in Europe, they're going to assemb assemble the, the car and also the airplane. Next is um, fully owned manufacturing. Okay, this strategy it means that a uh, foreign company is going to take full control over both production and promotion in target markets. Let's say um, Loteria. Okay, Loteria is a Japanese fast food chain okay so instead that uh, they're going to uh to get a supplier okay locally the one who's going to make a burger here in in korea okay they're just going to establish their own uh company here and then they're going to promote the product they're going to manage the product they're going to uh take control with the operation Next is the strategic alliances. So this is partnership with other firms that will complement your firm's needs. Okay? So you're going to, it's also somehow um, partnership, but uh, in terms of strategic alliances, what you are going to do is you're just going to combine your resources, but still the ownership, the decision making, the control over the management is independently separated from one another. Okay, that is strategic alliances. For management contract, okay, the organization or the firm is going to hire a third party okay, or agency that will handle the skill field aspect of the operation. Okay, they're going to look for an intelligent genius manager who will uh, take care of that uh, company in other country so that is management trust okay and what are the challenges of international marketing okay so these are some of the issues problems that hinder okay or stop one fear to enter into an international market so let us discuss them one by one. Number one is tariff barriers. Okay, high tax. Okay, stop. Okay, uh, fear to enter into one country. Of course, you you aim for a profit. If you are just going to use your money for paying taxes, okay, what will happen? Okay, it will be lost in your part. Okay. Next is administrative policies okay so these are some of the challenges if you go to china they are uh have a communist government style of uh government okay you have to comply strictly with their rules and regulations okay? if you go to saudi arabia they are not uh communist but they implement their policy is strictly okay so that could be one of the constraints. Okay. Another one is considerable adversities like cultural barriers, language, customs, religion, okay. uh, especially with the uh, Muslim countries. Okay. You have to comply in terms of um, halal. Okay. You have to serve, you have to provide the product that is halal certified. It should be it should comply with the rules and regulations of a Muslim culture. 
And the fourth one, we have political instability. New government, a new president, new officers, new set of rules and regulations. Okay, so that would be one of the challenges. Next, we have the place constraint. A good example is Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, uh, Turkmenistan. Okay, so those are country who are uh, considered to be a landlocked. They don't have an ocean. And as you know that uh, shipping goods and services via, via ocean or ship is kind of cheaper compared to the air transportation. Okay, so especially if your products is are perishable, okay, you have to uh, move that product as fast as as it can be because of the perishability of the product. Okay, and for the undeveloped country, okay, the roads, some of the infrastructures are not that developed. Okay, so if your uh, plan is about tourism. Okay, it would take a lot of money for you to build your uh, your hotel, or it would take a lot of uh, resources. Okay, because of the accessibility might be uh, might hinder your operation. Okay, next is variations in exchange rate. Okay, so the problem is that uh. The movement of currency rate is going ups and down. Okay? So it really creates serious settlement problem. Okay? I had mentioned in several of my discussion that China okay, purposely okay, set their currency very low to benefit the domestic uh, company. Okay? So that could be uh, one of the examples. So when you intend to have an uh, exportation transaction in China, so you are going to consider the currency rate, uh, yuan, yuan, okay? Second, uh, next is the norms and ethics challenges, okay? So, so there are some moral principles that are acceptable to you, but not acceptable to other country, okay? Especially like the sign language, the manner of greetings, uh, the table manners, the etiquettes. Okay, so you have to consider that, and that could be one of the challenges of international meeting. Okay, another one is terrorism and racism. Okay, so we, these are some of the constraints or the challenges in international marketing. And just recently, okay. Uh, the effect, the adverse effect of uh, new corona coronavirus. Okay, and originally it is known to be Wuhan virus because you know, uh, if there will be some new discoveries of virus where it is being discovered, you, uh, the, the ruling is that you're going to name the virus where it is being uh, discovered. But for some political reason. In, with the World Health Organization, they changed the name Wuhan virus to NCO, the new coronavirus okay, discovered in 2019. That's really have an adverse effect on uh, the whole wide world. So let's try to check also what are the benefits of international marketing. If you plan to sell your product abroad, okay, what are the good okay, impacts or the benefits that is waiting ahead of you. Okay. Number one, of course, increase of revenue because there will be new markets and there will be more sales. And international marketing could increase also your economy, economy of scale. Okay. You can find, you can discover a uh, raw, a source of raw materials at low cost, and then that could be also an opportunity for you to, uh, to find new uh, material system and metal that will help your production cost lessen. Okay? 
third is a focus on growing markets. Okay, so firms can diversify profitability in growing markets in case of recession. Okay, so you could go to other uh, other country. If there's a recession, you could move to another country. Okay, there are a lot of opportunities in other country. Next, we have the uh, exploring areas with less competition. Okay, so if you think that the market is saturated, you can find another market wherein uh, there is no available uh, supply of products wherein uh, like your product. Okay? Next is increased network opportunity. It could, it could extend partnership. It could broaden your network. And you could discover new talent and you could outsource new strategies in production. And lastly, it could promote your products. It could uh, beautify the image of firm in international market. Okay? So I want to give you this uh, trends that affecting global business. Okay? Because this kind of trends has an impact in the decision making of your firm this trend has an effect on how are you going to satisfy your customers needs and wants number one is the growth of the world trade organization and open trade agreements okay going back to the challenges okay like for example the trade barrier that the tariff, the quotas, okay. Because of this free trade agreement, they are now having and allowing the free flow of uh, goods and services in other market. They are trying to lessen the tariff. They are trying to impose some rules and regulations, okay, in a lenient way, okay, or they are not strict. And then they lessen some of the documents. And they are extending okay, the kinds of products wherein you can export to their countries. Okay? And also nowadays, there are developments of uh, internet, cellular, and network communication. And nowadays, uh, the informations are all available in the internet or online, but you have to make sure if the information you're going to get in the internet is credible valid or reliable okay. and lastly the trends affecting global business is the mandate to manage the global environment for the future so the trends now going to sustainability that's why you could hear a lot of company creating and manufacturing products that is eco-friendly okay how climate change it affect the decision making of the government and then the firms and how climate change okay affects the design of uh goods and services so those are some of the trends so if you are the firm okay you are going to do, to design your product according to what is the economic and the social demand okay so that's how this trend affect your business uh, a specific example of the international trade okay that leads to uh, peace talk and open the doors of uh of a country like north north korea is that a rail has been built to link north korea and south korea for the first time in nearly 60 years to transport material. So this is uh, a manifestation or a step toward peace and international trade. Okay. And also, uh, in United States of America, there are a lot of company, especially in Silicon Valley, okay, there are a lot of uh, uh, foreign company, okay, that is being established and operated in other company okay like example uh 7-eleven okay is being owned by japan but a lot of 7-eleven 
in US but also here in Korea. Okay, ben and Jerry's Ice Cream, Budweiser, Chrysler, and a lot more. Okay, so it means that the foreign product okay, is also now being sold in other countries and successfully. Okay, they became famous. Okay, their product became famous in international market. The international marketing task is more complicated than that of the domestic market because the international marketer must deal with at least two levels of uncontrollable uncertainty instead of one. So, somehow, the international marketing task also pertains with the environment of the firm. Okay. So, this is the activity that takes place before innovative marketing outside the native or parent country of the firm. So, these are the activities outside the company in other countries. Okay. So, if you are Korean... These are the activities that happen in Singapore, okay, the environment there, the customer there, the supplier, okay, so those are uh, the indicator of international marketing tasks, okay. But we are going to concentrate more on the specific um, environment, okay, for a very uh, layman's term or understandable server easy to understand okay, so specifically the aspects of international marketing tasks are client purchasing mindset the buying power the market trends and development competitive environment substitution and alternative products the best analysis this is an instrument being used to identify the politics, economy, society, and technology uh, events, okay, or what's happening to that environment. Then another one is SWOT analysis, the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats of the company. And another one is promotional, make sure how are you going to combine the strategy in terms of creating products and services like uh, you set the price, where are you going to sell it, the place, uh, what kind of communication materials you're going to do like advertising or event marketing and and also um, the design of the product itself, then including the price and cost. That Those covers, those are the things that covers the aspect of international marketing tasks. Okay? So as I had mentioned, this international marketing task has two categories, uncontrollable and controllable. Okay? This is the environment of a firm wherein it could affect the decision making of the management in terms of the operation. Uncontrollable meaning the company could not do anything about it. Okay? And we call it external environment, okay? domestic and, and foreign environment. What about controllable environment? So this category talks about the internal environment wherein the company has a, a direct control. They can decide, they can do anything about it according to the set goals of the company and that is the firm characteristics and resources the reason why we need to understand the, the scope of marketing and the challenges the trends and issues in international marketing is that for us or as a manager we draw uh, different ways on how to enhance awareness and to create a strategic plan okay, to better cope up with the international market. So if you have uh, if you have enrolled and registered in international strategic management 
somehow the method and the processes of scanning the environment and uh, assessing the environments of the firm case is also being covered in this chapter. How do managers become environmentally aware? So if you could see at Exhibit 1.2, okay, um, it will address the three important processes, scanning, monitoring, and uh, gathering competitive intelligence used to develop for a card. So the figure shows the relationship of these three important activities. Environmental scanning involves surveillance of the firm's external environment to predict environmental changes to come and detect changes that are already underway. For example, how fracture and gumbo with its wide of household products can be a good barometer of household spending. Uh, environmental scanning can also involve obtaining information from your customer base. So they add some feedback comments so that they will be able to decide of, of what product to paste out or what products to develop specifically they call their customers each week to see whether they had any ideas and surprisingly customers like it and they're happy about it and it increased uh, from their sales up for about 15 million dollars it is a 41% share increase in the market. Environmental monitoring tracks the evolutions of trends, events, or the stream of activities in the external environment. They monitor the consumer's behavior, the economic activities, they monitor the consumer's uh, expenditure. For example, uh, in, in a hotel industry, okay, they monitor the bedroom occupancy rate, the revenue per available room, and for imports executive, okay, PR1, okay, they monitor the net income, okay, the disposable income, and consumer confidence index. The third one, they monitor also in Johnson & Johnson the percentage of gross domestic product spent on healthcare and number of active hospital beds so that they could make a decision on how many products they are going to produce, what kinds of products is needed in the market. Competitive intelligence helps uh, firms define and understand the industry and identify rivals, strengths, and weaknesses. If it is being done properly, competitive intelligence helps a company to avoid surprises by effectively anticipating and responding to competitors' moves. This activity uses information to track competition flow and trends. Example, Banks continually track home loans, auto loans, and certificate of deposits. Another one is airlines. Okay? They monitor okay, changes on airfare daily in response to competition so that they could make a, a decision if they're going to drop the price or increase the price. Monitoring activities okay, has become easily to track nowadays because of the available uh, software and available information in the internet. Specifically, um, if you are aware with a slide share, okay, you could see publicly sharing PowerPoint from different organizations. Cora, it is a website where it uh, contains a question and answer relevant to the business industry and other fields of study. The third one, we have the spillage. 
spionage. It reveals advertising campaigns of companies, the best taglines, the words that are being used in advertising. And the common one, YouTube, a great for finding interviews for executives. Environmental scanning, monitoring, and competitive intelligence are important inputs for analyzing the external environment. However, they are all of little use unless they provide raw material that is accurate enough to help managers make accurate forecasts. Forecasting predicts directions like market shift, scope, will it include the entire economy, the politics, or particular industry, and speed and intensity like per average percent of increase or decrease. Example, in 1997, the former Microsoft CEO Nathan D. Myro mentioned that Apple is already dead, but in 2020, Apple ranked number three as the most valuable brand in the world by Visual Capitalist and Microsoft is in number four. How about scenario analysis? Okay. So scenario analysis provides a set of tools that enable managers to imagine trends and opportunities the future may bring as a general rule. Scenarios should be used by businesses whose external environments are prone to fundamental or sudden change and whose anticipation of such change is of vital strategic importance. It is important to note that scenario analysis draws on a wide range of discipline and interest among them, economics, psychology, sociology, and demo. Graphic. So they are going to use this kind of analysis to develop an alternative future decisions. The common and the basic technique for analyzing firm and industry condition is SWOT analysis. Okay? SWOT analysis identify the strength, the weakness, the opportunities and the threats of the company that may affect the decision making of the organization. Particularly, strengths and weakness analyze firms' internal conditions. Okay? So it analyzes which aspect of the operation that the firm excels or where it may be lacking or needs some improvement. For the opportunities and threats, we focus on the external environment. Okay? Uh, we assess the different in development that exists in the general environment and also the activities among firms' competition. The general environment consists of factors that can have a dramatic effect on a firm's strategy. Typically, a firm has little ability to predict trends and events in the general environment, and even less ability to control them. We divide the general environment into six segments, demographic, sociocultural, political, legal, Technological, economic, and global. Demographics are the most easily understood and quantifiable elements of the general environment. Demographics includes elements such as aging population, rising or declining affluence, changes in ethnic composition, geographic distribution of the population, and income level disparities. Like, for example, in Italy, the factors that contribute to the rapid increase of NCOB casualty, I think around more than 1,800, because of its aging population. Italy has the oldest population in Europe. That's why it's really heavily affected.
social cultural segments or forces influence the values, beliefs, and lifestyle of a society. Example, include a higher percentage of women in the workforce. Dual income families increases the number of temporary workers, greater concern for healthy diets and physical fitness, greater interest in the environment and families postponing having children. So these are the aspects that may affect the consumer behavior, the spending ability of the consumer. In Saudi Arabia, it was only in 1956 when they opened schools for women. The first school was the Dar al Hanan. The social norm in Saudi Arabia is segregation of women and decisions are responsibility of male guardians. Also in the U.S., women now hold 51.6% of all managerial and professional jobs, but before, they do not include women in a workforce. So a new focus on soft skills like mentoring, inspiring, collaboration, and building relationships may benefit women. So if the nature of your business is about um, like counseling or your product pertains to uh, enhancement of personality, okay, you, you may consider um, hiring uh, a female employee like for example in hospitality industry why do you think there are a lot of female worker in the front test or front line because um, normally during in the early days the businessman or the traveler are commonly male okay so to attract a lot of businessmen they tend to hire um, female because of their pleasing personality and their passionate attitude in working and which attracts a lot of male customer and that's what we call the, the the soft skills also and in the comprehensive study of more than 7,000 leaders women rank higher than men in 12 out of 16 leadership attributes okay? so this is just only in a particular this study In terms of political or legal segments, what are the external processes okay, that covers this uh, category? Political processes and legislation influence the regulations, so more on rules and regulations, with which industries must comply. Some important elements of the political or legal arena include tort reform, the Americans with Disabilities Act or the ADA, the repeal of the glass steagall Act in 99, now banks may offer brokerage services, the regulation of utilities in other industries, and increases in the federally mandated minimum wage. Here in Korea, okay, you are being known to frequently change your law to change your policy, but of course, you're doing that based on the current situation of your country. Another example is President Donald Trump um, had implemented a policy closing the border to Mexicans because he assumed that Americans were losing jobs because of immigrants and some of them are undocumented and illegal. Here also in Korea, last time I had watched in... Uh, in the television that there is a mass demonstration okay, calling against the foreign workers. Okay, they want foreign workers to be uh, hosted in Korea because uh, some Koreans are losing their jobs because foreigners are accepting compensation beyond or uh, uh, below a minimum wage. Okay? If you are uh, an owner of uh, or of a company here in Korea, of course, you're trying to get some way on how you could minimize labor costs. That's why they hire foreign workers, okay, because they have to compensate them less than Koreans. And 
they are even hiring undocumented foreigners okay, that will work for them. That's why nowadays Korea has a very strict policy. They implement a strict policy of uh, entertaining or accepting uh, tourists or foreigners from other countries. And another policy that they had just released is about uh, what they what they call like they're giving uh, a chance for the illegal foreigner, the illegal workers here in Korea, okay, to surrender, okay, to surrender to to the immigration, and they could still come back here, and uh, they're going to delete or they're going to erase the the record of being overstayed here in Korea and they call it amnesty amnesty due to the dramatic development in technology it leads to the new products and services which improve also the function the features and the delivery to the end user innovations really create entirely new industries and alter existing industries if you can see in your monitor, the, the particular examples like genetic engineering, uh, 3D printing, computer-aided design, research in synthetic and synthetic materials, and etc. Recently, okay, due to research and development, they have invented what we call fisholytics, which link wearable computing device with data analysis. A particular example is Nike Plus, the shoes. Okay? It used by runners to track distance, speed, and other metrics. I think Apple Watch also have the same features. One of the most complex and compli complicated segments of general environment is economic segments. The economy has an impact on all industries from suppliers of raw materials to the manufacturers of finished goods and services, as well as all organizations in the service, wholesale, retail, government, and nonprofit sectors of the economy. The key indicators include the thought of this interest rate, unemployment rate, the consumer price index, the gross domestic product GDP and the net disposable income. The most watched economic index is BJIA or Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can see there uh, the different flow of the industry. Okay? Which one is uh, which has a, a significant impact okay, in terms of numbers okay. in Korea okay international trading or Korea's trading they are very particular and following keenly the Korean economic index nowadays there are a lot of countries are opening their doors towards globalization because it's able to found out that there's a huge opportunity to access in a larger potential markets and it could broaden the base of factor of production. Okay? They could find low labor costs in China, in Vietnam, in the Philippines, and available raw materials. They could outsource skilled managers and technical professionals. However, such endeavors carry many political and economic risks. More so, example of important elements in the global segments include currency, uh, increasing of global trade, economic emergence of India, China, admittance to the World Trade Organization, trade agreements, uh, regulations, and other trade blocks or trade barriers. So these would really affect 
the decision making of the organization so they have to comply with the international rules and regulations okay, being promulgated by ICC international chambers of commerce and some of the rules and regulations okay, created by world trade organization As a manager, okay, you have to consider the key factors in the global economy and that is the rising of the middle class in emerging countries and how it has led to increased employment in those countries by multinationals. If you're going to evaluate them, okay, you could find uh, some strategy on how you could position your products and services in global segments okay. to wrap up everything that we discussed okay, let's go on with our conclusion okay understanding the scope of international marketing could be a big help for a firm to position their strategy accordingly okay and knowing the company's environment using Vessel, identifying the political, economical, social, technological, legal, and environment of a firm. We're going to analyze that through monitoring, through scanning, to collecting of the uh, uh, intelligent information. Okay, it could minimize the risk in going in international market, and same way. It could identify potential courses of action for a firm's competitive advantage. Lastly, understanding the scope and external environments of firm could help organizations to utilize resources accordingly, effectively, and efficiently based on socioeconomic demand. I hope that we could be able to understand and know now the scope of international marketing include exploitation importation joint venture okay so uh, for the next coming chapter we are going to learn also how okay can we create a strategy or a game plan okay uh for a particular scope of uh, international marketing environment. Okay, so I think that's for today. Thank you and enjoy your uh, the rest of the day. Bye everyone.